Well, one of the things we noticed here, speaking about Asia, is obviously there are a lot of Hanyu fans that came all the way yes. here, which is really great and really exciting. It's wonderful to Absolutely, see. Absolutely. Um, Especially in I had to make a, there's a, a lovely woman who follows me on Facebook, mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, she assumed that I choreographed his short program, mm -hmm. and she did a post with, you know, with like, how do they say when you attach someone's name? You tag. To tag well, I'm tagged to the post. As you know, David was such a fabulous job, blah, 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 blah. So I had to, like, say, actually, <laughs> Jeffrey Buttle did this exquisite piece. So, you know, I had to clarify because... That's going to be because many yeah. choreographers have been like, I, well, did yeah. <laughs> I know it would have been easy, right? Yeah, you but have I mean, integrity, David. We well, you know, that. but Jeffrey's my boy, so yeah. I am proud of it. Kind of in a grandfatherly way, uh -huh. I guess you know, because I still choreograph Jeff. Yeah, he choreographs Jesus. Yeah, you know. it's all you. Well, one yeah. of the things we wanted to talk to you about is that obviously Hanyu is such an immense star in his country. He's in a movie <coughs> coming out. In, oh, is he really? He's wow. in a movie with a. Oh, he plays a. The whole free skate, and he's a warrior, and all types. He is a warrior. Yeah, he's a That's warrior. That's not in a the stretch. Movie too. Oh, he is a warrior in real life, but he's yeah. playing a warrior in the movie, I believe. Wow. Now, you've spoken a lot. Amazing. You did an interview where we spoke in depth about Yuna. How do you compare? Because obviously, we see Hanyu 2014, 2016 is mm -hmm. the star of Japan. He's Yuna like a was, Yuna, isn't he? Yuna was the star of Korea, but how do you compare them as people on a daily basis as a skater? Um, they both have that ability to come alive, for sure. Yes, they're both. They're both laser sharp when it comes to like the attack, like the warrior thing or the tiger thing. Like they're fierce competitors. They're both uh, extremely self-directed, self. You know what I mean. And strange enough, when I worked with Yuzu, he told me that Yuna was his idol. He idolized her, and I don't think it was just for her skating. I think it was the way she did it. Okay. The way she commanded those four years. Do you know what I mean? Like, he wanted to be that kind of a force, you know? And he wrote me a letter that was just so touching when we were trying to prepare his um, Olympic, like, trying to find his Olympic music, like, for the Olympic Long Program. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to do it, but he had his heart set on the Romeo and Juliet, because I've done it three million times for all these different people, ladies, men's, pairs, and God knows, you know, but he just had his heart set on it. And um, the letter he wrote was so touching because he was like, please help me do this because I just, I'm ready. Like, I'll do anything. Like, I will die. I'll, I'll do anything to be the Olympic champion. I don't want to wait till 2018. I want it now. And I'll, I'll, I'll do anything. I'm willing to die for it. Like, anything you tell me, I'll do it. Like, mm -hmm. but help me. Like, help me. It was like Jerry Maguire. Like, help. Me, help you, you know. And I mean, yeah, the boy's got intensity. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa. Is he know? intense off the ice? Um, he's pretty sweet. He's kind of a sweet boy. Like, it, you know, you know, hi, and you know, he he laughs easily in practice. He's nice with everybody around. You know, he's he's no, he's not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, maybe he can be. I don't. I don't know him Is that. he allowed to have fun and does he have time to? I don't know him that well. I never got, you know, I worked with him for like a year and a half, mm -hmm. like two seasons. Um, and I never got as close to him as I did with Yuna. Mm -hmm. Not, not anywhere near close. So it, we didn't, I never had that relationship with him like I did with Yuna. So, so obviously I can't say. You have worked with him. Yes. You worked with Shailen Bourne, whom you've collaborated with. Who I adore. Um, deeply, deeply, deep, deeply, deeply loves. And he works with Jeff, whom you also love. Uh, who I adore All and I'm so proud of. My babies. They're my babies. Mind you, Shaylin, I only ever worked with a little bit. We, we, I choreographed a piece for her mm -hmm. at a certain point in her career to Joni Mitchell, um, Woodstock. It was gorgeous. Um, and a dream come true for me. Mm -hmm. um, and Shaylin and I have collaborated together. We've we've done pieces together for pairs. We've done pieces together for dance. Of course, she's been in the shows. She helped me choreograph the show, the last show for Yuna. We we she she came in and helped me put it together. So I we just I just you know, she's one of my my loves. You know. So when he's in the ring, do you still work with him on a daily basis, like you would work with Javier? 
Are you not like? Do you give him lessons or touch Who? him? Han, Han, you do you? Have I don't work with him anymore at all. Okay. No, no, okay. no. Um, after the Olympics, mm -hmm. that was the, like I haven't worked with him since the Olympics. Mm -hmm. The following year, he he did the short with he did the, the fabulous electric guitar short mm -hmm. with uh, Jeff, and then the the Phantom of the Opera with Shay, mm -hmm. and then he did this this. Um, Chopin short with Jeff, and the Japanese warrior with Shay. Okay. So, but I'm, no, no, keep going. well, no, I'm I'm happy to see that he's followed through. You know, I have to say, mm -hmm. I've worked with a lot of Japanese skaters, and I love Japan, and I love Japanese skaters. However, with my experience, the Japanese skaters typically like there's been a few that I had ongoingness with, like. Nobunari Oda. Mm -hmm. uh, then he left, and then he came back. But there was, there was, there was, you know, people don't understand that with with choreography, you get your best work after two, three years. Mm. I mean, you, uh, you, you can hit it out. Of, sometimes you do the first gig, and it's, you hit it out of the park, and that's great. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen. It's just that if you can develop a relationship, it, it is very fruitful. And the Japanese, they tend to shop the world, mm -hmm. you know, Coaches they buy the best from France, the best from, and you see it in their culture, you, you go there and it's like, oh, there was a fabulous Italian, they just kind of shop the world. So most of the Japanese skaters have traditionally gone through a rotation of choreographers and every year they have a different choreographer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I've worked with most of them. But not more than once or twice each. Like, it, you don't get... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you need to really get to know somebody and how that And I'm happen. happy to see that Yuzu has stayed with Jeff and stayed with Shay. And Jeff and Shay have obviously had the chance to develop. Because you, you need to get to know these kids and what you can do. And then they need to realize how they can best bring your work to life like it's it's a process it doesn't just you know bang happen in a week well, one of the so. things dave and i really noticed and you could see it on the, his short program last night the quad toe wasn't great the landing of it and he fought for that oh he's a fighter yeah yeah really yeah. Strong. he just seems like he's much more in attack mode this season have you seen a difference in his training what is it how is his i training do changed? the one complaint i had uh, the one thing that was hard for me when i worked with yuzu is and i even said to jeff i was jealous i said why can't i cork up this short because at the time he never had stamina that's what we always talk so about so he yeah. could do a great short but he would just Die in I mean, the he long. Was dead at the end of the oh, long. Oh, he would. Both my longs that I choreograph for him, he just he would die. And it's not like my choreography is that difficult. I mean, more than Shaylin's or Jeffrey. It's just that, you know, he came back, and I tell you, he came back, and I think I mentioned this. Maybe it was a different article, but I did mention this in a different article. I was I think I was talking about Tess and Scott's coming back and how we should applaud it. We need to like receive these people with love and like with Patrick coming back it's a good it's good for the sport because when Patrick came back and like won Skate Canada mm -hmm. with only one quad and only one axle and then Bo Yang was there and he's doing his triple this, his quad this and his quad that and quad 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 and Yuzu came back from that competition and he was like like on fire he called in Jeff changed the short two quads in the short called in Shaylin, changed the extra quad and then you know, just mm. put in it, we're doing it like and I remember talking with Jeff and Jeff was like, Oh, like he wants yeah. you know, yeah. there was no talking him out of it, yeah. right? It was like, Oh my God, what's this Ooh, like what's gonna happen? But you know, look look, you gotta hand it to the kid. I mean he did it. He's pulling it off. And he's strong enough now to do a long program. He's on a mission. He's got thing. stamina wow. now. Like he can do a long program. So I'm really um, happy for him, but I'm like somewhat envious <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. So, but it's great. I mean, you know. 
I mean, speaking, we used to, those programs you talked about him, I think we were always <coughs> saying he's so brilliant at the end, he's like a noodle, like he's Oh, which is a completely oh, yeah. party would fall Collapse. And and just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, he just, you know, I, I, he doesn't, he didn't have the stamina, but he's obviously worked on it and he's willed it to be. Mm-hmm. I think uses that kind of person. If he wants something, he will will it into mm-hmm. reality. Yeah. So. Well, he skated to Romeo and Juliet and Notre Dame de Paris, which were used so heavily, not only in skating, but those particular seasons. Mm-hmm. The same thing, I think he did Notre Dame de Paris, Marilyn Charlie were using it. it was obviously and then he did Phantom of the Opera. Yes. That was <laughs> well, when I first started with Yuzu, what did you want to do? Phantom of the Opera. I said no. Patrick mm-hmm. had just finished with it. Yeah. I wasn't even working with Patrick at the time, but I was like, or maybe I was. I think I had started with Patrick, but I didn't do Patrick's Phantom. Of course, mm-hmm. Laurie did. But just because, you know, I mean, I was like, you want to make your own statement. Mm-hmm. Come on. Right. There's lots of music out there, and you're right. really good. So yeah. I was trying, but he also idolized Johnny Weir. Mm-hmm. So the Notre Dame was my compromise, my way to, Please you know, yeah, because Johnny had done it. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't something we, it was like the, the most notable piece for Johnny, but Johnny had done it, so he liked it. Because Johnny did it. <laughs> so. Do you think he's having more of an, ar- uh, an artistic awakening after? Because it seems the last year, at least this year, he's. I, you know, it. honestly, I don't know because don't yeah. forget, I'm just watching at a distance. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I keep a polite distance and I'm not involved, so I. I, I, you know, and obviously I'm working with Patrick, so I'm yes. the competition <laughs> and Javi. Yeah. So, you know, I, I keep a graceful distance and, you know, I, I, but I see things. I mean, you know. You talk about working with Javi and Patrick and obviously you do. How do you compare the three of them? I know, eh? Well, we were just talking about that the other day. But don't forget the Olympic year, I worked with all three. Oh. Mm-hmm. So I almost had the whole podium. I'm not being braggadocious, no, you're just but had had Javi not made his little bobo mistake of the extra whatever, his extra triple toe, mm-hmm. <laughs> he would have. You know? Yeah, he was fourth mm-hmm. because of that. I would have. They would have been the whole podium, you know. Um, and I struggled with it because that's a that's kind of a daunting mm-hmm. task to choreograph all three top men in the world, you know, and have them be distinct and have the work all be good and worthy of them. But the thing that makes it, that made it easy and that I'm still enjoying with the other two, with Javi and Patrick, is that they're so different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so different. Uh, They're just different kind of people, different bodies, different skating styles, different jumping technique. I mean, they, they are just, you know, because you do have certain types of skaters and you can see, oh, this one is kind of like that one and so on and so forth. We see that. Genres, yeah. Genres and through the generations, you know. Oh, oh, that guy reminds me of Charlie Tickner. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, this guy, oh, like Sean Sawyer was very tall at Princeton, mm-hmm. you know. like, yeah. You know, you see these kind of types. You'll see, like, that Russian boy today, mm-hmm. who's in the final group, he's so young and so talented. He's so Ilya Kulik. Mm-hmm. So yeah. precise, his jumps wow. are like tick, tick, and just perfect, you know? Like, But these three guys are each their own unique type, mm-hmm. which is so yeah, cool. Three of the best ever. Three of the best ever, historically ever. So it's, yeah, no, it is really quite astounding. I mean, Javi has this this Hollywood charisma, this presence about him. You can't quite put your finger on it. And he just can do these pieces that are so refreshing and so they bring the public in. I mean, people love him. My condo where I live is, um, you know, obviously they all know that I do choreography. And of all the skaters that they know I work with, they only ever ask me about Javi. Mm. Oh, how's your Spanish boy doing? Well, you know, that's oh, Jenny I, I saw yeah, your Spanish boy on TV. Yeah. You know, that's Jenny Crush for a couple of years now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. And Mickey better. Oh. She, she has him, but he's yeah. yeah. And he was on our show and was just so uh, charming. Isn't he? No, he's yeah. for real. And he comes from love. His parents are absolutely the most adorable thing ever. His sister. You know what his sister told me? His sister was, a, was the Spanish champion mm-hmm. before him. Like, he's, she's a little older. Mm-hmm. And... You know, she kind of hit whatever kind of the <coughs> ceiling, 
and had decided, okay, you know, if I want to make it to Olympics, I mean, I'm going to try dance because she was a beautiful skater, but the, I guess the jumps were kind of, she'd reached a limit. And um, she told me this over dinner uh, when I was over there with him in, in Madrid. And she said that um, she'd tried the dance and she had a, a partner. It was going really well. And it was really looking like it could go somewhere. But Javi was starting to really do well and getting Junior Grand Prix and really getting a lot of attention. And it started to look like, the, you know, my little brother has got some real potential here. So she quit. I went back to school because I didn't have the money for two. I almost cried. Yeah. Yeah. And she said it was such love. She was proud of it. Like she, mm -hmm. it wasn't like any regrets or anything. No resentment. Nothing. Only love. And now she's becoming a nurse, and they're just, they're just like, ugh. Good people. Oh, my God. And his father is so handsome and so debonair and so gracious, and his mom is, like, so adorable. She should do Paris. Like, she weighs 65 pounds. Oh. You pick her up. Yeah. Like, she's so cute, you know? But, yeah, he's, he's a, a great kid. Great, great kid. Well, speaking coming from love, the one thing that I've gotten from people talking, doing research about you, is that they all say that when you work with you, you genuinely want the skaters to do well. So obviously... Yeah. You know, and you want, you know, but... Doesn't everybody? Well, I mean, it's a business. You know, well, it's it feels like you make those personal connections. It's not just, skaters. I want to make you look good on yeah, the ice. I really want to get to know you. Yeah. And care about you. So what is it like watching them compete? Because you have these men competing yeah. against each other, and you know how bad they all want it. You see Javi. You see Patrick. What is it like seeing them compete against one another? And you yeah, no, I, I, well, it... And it is strange at times, but it's not. I've I've had that situation before. Like I, I worked with Cynthia and Joanny when they were both kind of tit but for not tat, fighting for world champion. No, but it's all yes. relative. They yeah. were fighting for the Canadian champion. True. Yeah. So, I mean, but it is strange. You know, the thing that that people don't understand. For me, I was, I was barely competitive. Like I never even actually competed at the junior level. I competed at the novice level. So for me, this whole world, I was always on the outside looking into this world. I was friends with all kids that were national, international, at, you know, at the cricket. But so I was always on the outside looking into that world. It wasn't my world. And so for me, I don't know. It, there's, for me, it's, I'm really in awe of their talent. All of them have so much more talent than I had for jumping. It's like the real sport aspects of it. I mean, I can move better than them. <laughs> Most of them, right? But um, it, there's this, there's this um, part of me that is just so thrilled, really honestly thrilled, because I would have given my left arm and I'm left-handed to be that talented, you know. So it's kind of a selfless place that you go. I feel responsible to try to give them as much as I can, as much as, as, and, and to, like, I'll, I'll never forgive myself for not getting Yuna to point her goddamn toes. Because <laughs> well, trust me, friends that. of mine that I've known and loved for years were yeah. emailing me. I mean, toes are the most important thing to me. Everybody knows, you know what I mean? And the tides are But, oh, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. And I used to joke with her. I'm like, you realize that I'm going to be blamed. Right. Every time you don't point your toes, I, it's mm -hmm. like, I'm punished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just, you know, every skater has that thing, or like a thing, yeah. and it's a, she, did, she did work on her turnout a little bit, but it was like, the kind of skates that she wore, and just, what kind did she wear? I don't know, she changed all the time, but they were always, in my opinion, too big and clumpy, like not the kind of, you remember like Wiffas, they were like, meant to look pointy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, anyways, it's a different generation, but well, speaking of great just but that's a, that's an example of like for me, I just feel um, that when I'm working with these talent, like I feel blessed 
part of me will always feel like, how the hell did I get to this position mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, work with all this talent? And so, but along with that comes, for me, a personal sense of responsibility. Uh, you know, I think of Sarah Kawahara and how incredibly talented she was and like how affected I was by just watching her work. I never even got to work with her personally because I wasn't a star, but she choreographed the show. So I got to see it happen. I got to be around her, you know. And even my coach, uh, Ozzy Coulson, and, and the skaters that I work with, all the talented people that I've seen, and I think, God, I am working with these kids. I, I'm trying to channel everyone and give them yeah. Well, speaking of channeling skaters, you have Patrick Chan, who's obviously <coughs> one of the great talents of the sport. Yeah. And you have a little bit of a different approach to him this season. We're seeing Mac the Knife. What are you trying to channel in his skating? What are you trying to bring out well, that we haven't seen from Patrick? That comes from Patrick. We see, we did a show number for him to uh, Tony Bennett, and he loved it. And he just felt so comfortable and he enjoyed this show performance that he did on stars or wherever all the shows that he does and it just really felt good to him he loved it and he said to kathy i want to do a short program that's like this kind of thing that's, that's that kind of feeling you know so that's how the mac the knife came up because we were trying to find something that was along those lines that he'd done the Tony Bennett. I mean, we literally could have taken the Tony Bennett and transformed it into also a short program, mm. but we thought, so. I knew it would be a challenge for him though, because he'd never, I mean, it's one thing to do that kind of piece in a show where you don't have the big tricks hanging over your head and you don't have the pressure. Um, you can be a little looser and a little more off the cuff and let yourself go and enjoy it. But um, he'd never done a short that had that kind of pizzazzy quality. So it's taken him all season. I mean, he really only performed at under pressure really, really cleanly at nationals. It wasn't bad here. You know, he went down on the axle, but the overall was there. So we were. I was happy for him with this, but... His long programs are usually more classical, and we see that this season. Is that a conscious choice to have the long where there's more technical content? Mm. Be a little bit slower. No, uh, but when I found this music, uh, it was it was just because I liked the name of the first piece. It was revolutionary, and I knew he had this spirit, like he wanted to come back and affect the sport and change the sport, and he's he's driven in that way like he's learned so much from Kathy mm -hmm. from the dance world he's really opened his eyes to what skating could be beyond you know the the competitive aspect of it and so and I've always loved that piece I've always loved the slow part as well and I started realizing oh and then I found this scarecrow to go with it I thought these pieces belong together why didn't I think of this before so it was just very organic. It wasn't like, oh, we have to do. I mean, I knew I knew that he loved Chopin music, but honestly, when I found those pieces, I called Kathy and I was like, I think I have something for Patrick. And she was the one who said, oh, he loves piano music. He loves Chopin. I was like, perfect. And yeah, that's what it is, right? But I, you know, I don't, I don't have any grand designs. I, you, the only thing is. I generally will look f for as much contrast as I can. Mm -hmm. So if you know, even if I don't choreograph both pieces, I'll ask them, okay, what's your short? And if it's Malaguena, I'll try to go so far away from that. Because I think... To show that range. Yeah, and, and for them to start developing a range. Mm -hmm. And they'll ask, what was your last three programs? So. I know where you've been, so we try to experiment a little bit, you know. Speaking um, of range, you have Javier, who's one of the most charismatic individuals in the sport we've ever seen, and this year he's got a great free skate that's similar to things we've done, but the short, he has this machismo that we haven't seen before. So I guess, what is it like working with him, and how do you come up with vehicles for Javi? Uh, well, it's, it's like, same like all of it, I mean, but the short program, he wanted to work with, um, um, so, yeah, uh, Antonio Najaro, Naj Naj um, who is flamenco god of Spain. 
and uh, try to do something with him collaboratively. And so Brian and I were all supportive of that. And um, and then the, the long program, um, I, I wanted to find something that had like a sex appeal to it, you know, because we did the Charlie, we did the opera with the kind of the cute aspects, the, the charming. I wanted to be, I wanted it to have swagger and a little more moxie, you know. And I was listening to, guy, I mean, I, I watched Guys and Dolls and I was like, wow, no one has ever really done Guys and Dolls, like in the skating world. And I actually found enough instrumental music that I could have done it fully instrumental, really cool, with like right from from the movie, from the from the 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 film version of it. And I thought, God, why didn't I do this like to, like for somebody else like years ago? But um, yeah, I I don't know. I just I thought this would be great for him. The the whole. Um, Frank Sinatra. See, there's an interesting story too there because in the movie, Frank Sinatra was actually in the film version, but he didn't play Sky Masterson. He played the other character. So Frank, although Frank Sinatra was at the time of the filming already known for singing Luck Be a Lady. That was part of his show that he would sing every night. He was already famous for singing that song, but in the movie he never got to sing that song. Well, uh, Marlon Brando had to sing it. Who can't sing? Right. Well, it was cool the way he did it, though, because he did it very theatrical, and it was like it was cool the way they wove it into the action of when they're gambling down in the down in the old subway lines, and it's really cool. Like, um, so I thought it was kind of fun to like give Frank his his moment, his moment, <laughs> and it was, right. Yeah. And it was Frank Sinatra's hundredth birthday. Like, had he still been alive, like this year, like during the season, yeah.